Matt here again. Today I'm going to cover the unsolved case of Dale Kerstetter, who has been missing from Bradford, Pennsylvania since September of 1987. Dale Kerstetter was employed at the Corning Glassworks factory in Bradford, Pennsylvania. He was last seen on September 12, 1987 at 11pm during his weekend shift. Dale was 50 years old at the time and had worked for the factory for 27 years. John Lindquist was a security guard with the company. He was slated to take over after Dale's shift. John found Dale's lunch pail, which was full, sitting on a table in the cafeteria, as well as a newspaper and keys on the cafeteria table. Kerstetter's truck was still in the parking lot with the keys in the ignition. A carton of cigarettes, a gun holster, and a 22 caliber pistol, as well as Kerstetter's day pack, were also found. Kerstetter was not found in or around the plant. A police dog traced Kerstetter's scent to the second floor of the plant where the glass furnace was located, an area which was not part of Kerstetter's normal security rounds. Also found by law enforcement was the fact that $250,000 worth of platinum pipe was missing. Security tapes from three cameras showed a masked intruder in the back of the plant. The intruder was seen in the area where the platinum was missing. Kerstetter was seen talking to the masked intruder. As both Kerstetter and the intruder walked away, Kerstetter looked directly into the security camera. Authorities do not know if Kerstetter was signaling for help or flaunting a crime. A third shot shows the intruder wheeling out a large bag. Police speculate that the bag may have contained the missing platinum or may have contained the body of Dale Kerstetter. The case first aired on Unsolved Mysteries, uh, hosted by Robert Stack on October 25th, 1989. In the episode, his daughter Penny Baptiste to explain that Dale did not need money to survive. He had stock in Corning, he had adult children who were able to take care of him, Penny was in a position to take care of him. He had six children and he had a seemingly very little incentive to abandon them, even though they may have been uh, able-bodied themselves, he still would have no incentive to leave his family. His mother, Evelyn Hansen, described him as an honest man. She said that he didn't like to lie. Dale's mother claiming that he was honest, I think seemed like a sincere statement to me. I don't, it didn't come across as a lie, not in my opinion. His son, Al Kerstetter, said that anyone would want Dale as a dad. Uh, as someone with a son myself, I hope that my son one day says that about me. So it also just doesn't seem like something that would be a lie. I, I think that if anything, he would say something negative about him or nothing at all if there was something negative to say about him. I don't think he would go out of his way to say something positive unless he believed it. He really did, did seem excited talking about his dad and in a sort of a happy way. So I believe that to be a, a true statement by his son Al. C. Dale Perry, the personnel manager for the company, stated that Dale was a marginal employee, but also recounted a scenario where he potentially saved half a dozen lives and prevented hundreds of thousands of dollars in property damage. The scenario was that a forklift rolled under a stream of bolted glass. The glass was pouring down onto a, uh, the, a propane tank on the back of the forklift. Dale immediately jumped on the forklift and drove it away. As said previously, that may have resulted in the saving of half a dozen lives and prevented hundreds of thousands of dollars in property damage. Patrick Foley, a former personnel manager, reviewed the security footage. He suspected foul play when he saw the masked man in the footage. He claimed that the intruder knew where to find tools and bags to steal the platinum, despite the low light. So, some indication that the person who committed the thief, the masked man, knew had some familiarity with the with the factor itself. Investigator Max J. Bizak of the Pennsylvania State Police said that the masked man wheeled out a heavy bag. He speculated that it could have been the platinum or it could have been the body of Dale Kerstetter. Bizek stated that at the time of the theft, Dale was, uh, he took a five to seven thousand dollar pay cut at, from the company uh, at the time and was also thirty to forty thousand dollars in arrears on various payments, trailer payments and others. However, his daughter Penny on sitcoms online, a message forum that covers unsolved mysteries, she stated that that was sort of standard debt for anyone with a mortgage and that the debt was manageable for Dale. So, and it really doesn't seem that outrageous, thirty to $40,000 seems pretty typical. If that was consumer debt, credit card debt, then I could understand maybe a case being made, but if he was just a man with a mortgage, it doesn't seem like an awful lot of debt in my opinion. It would have been helpful in my opinion if the Unsolved Mysteries episode showed more of the security footage rather than the reenactment. Apparently the original footage was stop motion using individual photos, the recreated footage on Unsolved Mysteries was streaming video. The recreated footage on Unsolved Mysteries was streaming video. Kerstetter's daughter Penny noted that security guards at the plant were supposed to check in every hour. Between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. Kerstetter did not check in, so this really leaves six different times, 11 p.m., 12 p.m., and then 1 through 4, 
where he should have been checking in. So he didn't do so, and that should have set off some a red flag somewhere, uh, I would say, but it didn't seem to happen. Kerstetter's case remains unsolved and foul play is suspected in his disappearance. Could this have been an inside job? Dale looked into the camera in one scene and there has been speculation as to what he was trying to convey. Was he signaling for help or was he flaunting his crime? Dale's son, L, claimed that he thought his father could be in Australia or Canada and would come after the statute of limitations on this crime was up. He claimed the statute of limitations would be up in seven years, so I'm not sure if that was seven years from 1987 when it happened or from 1989, the airing of Unsolved Mysteries, which would have made it a, a total of nine years. But if it wasn't from 1987, then in 1994, he would have been able to come back home without really any risk of prosecution. Uh, but this is 2015 now. It's long up and he's not yet to be seen. Kerstetter's daughter Penny claimed that these were just the musings of a 16-year-old boy who idolized his father and wished for him to be alive. When you think about it, it would have been easier for Al to believe that his father was a criminal than he, that he was dead. And I understand that, especially as a 16-year-old who loves his dad, I get that. So that, that seems to make sense to me. He was, he was just a kid and he had no knowledge of the crime. And again, Al, Al had a reason to hope for that at the time, but Dale hasn't shown up since, unfortunately. Some questions. If Dale was killed, why wasn't he killed at the plant? Kidnapping somebody opens up a totally new can of worms. Like in my previous video about Annie Herring, it just so much can go wrong with the kidnapping. And uh, I, I can't imagine how you would manage that, especially when people risk that or are in a position where they feel like their life is at risk, they could be at the end of their lives. They could do something desperate and because they think they could die. So it just it would be a lot of responsibility, a lot of liability, not just not just legal liability, but just the liability in, in terms of just successfully completing that job, even though it's a bad thing, but success from the point of view of the criminal, there's a lot of responsibility there. And I, I imagine that that would be incredibly difficult to do. But if he was killed at the plant, you'd think there would be some blood evidence or something like that, which they didn't find. So I would say most likely he was killed outside of the plant. And I don't know how that would have happened exactly. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense in my mind. His body was nowhere to be found. So unless there was a way to dispose of him in the plant, but you'd think that after all this time, there would have been evidence of that. So it just seems like a very challenge, challenging thing on behalf of the criminal to get away with that. Now, Dale left with the cigarettes to, to work. So it seems odd for a person who smoked a pack of cigarettes daily that he wouldn't leave with him after, at the scene of the crime. His daughter, Wendy, made that point. This reminds me of a point made by Mike Reamer's father, Lloyd Reamer, who stated that Mike allegedly would have left the scene without his jacket. And it doesn't really make any sense that he would have walked several miles out in the snowy conditions of Washington without a jacket on when he could have easily just grabbed his jacket. Why would you just walk out and your jacket's right there? Why wouldn't you take it? And apparently that was edited in a, uh, in, in a re-airing of that Unsolved Mysteries episode where it took the position that Mike was a domestic abuser and it just sort of focused on that. I really don't see why that point was edited. It just seems sort of agenda driven, but why wouldn't you take your jacket, you know? And again, you know, as, as, as Wendy said, why not take your, your cigarettes? It's, you're smoking every day, they're easy to grab. If he knew that it was going to happen, he could have just had him in his pocket, for example. He just, why would you leave all the stuff in the car? Unless it, he just suddenly got the idea to rob the place, you'd think that he would have just brought that stuff inside. He, he left it all in his car as if he was going, going to come back to it. And you could say that he did that to uh, just throw investigators off the off him as a lead suspect, which is possible, I suppose. But uh, that, that requires, for, for that to happen, it would just require so many things working out perfectly, like very... Uh, cunning, ver a lot of pre-planning in, in general. Uh, do, do criminals really act this intelligently? I, not, not really. I'm not saying it never happens, but uh, I, I just think that he would be a very cunning thief, or maybe he just didn't do it. Is it possible that Dale was in it and also helped the perpetrator but was later murdered? Good question, I think, because is it possible that he initially would have been okay with it or and then later on was determined to, that he was just a nuisance and should and was going to cut into the profits of the platinum and was killed off. It's possible. It's uh, it's definitely something we're thinking about anyway. Was it also possible that the criminal came in, Dale recognized him as an employee, and he said, just do nothing, and I'm not going to shoot you, but this is serious. Don't do anything, Dale. Let me leave with the platinum or else I'm going to I'm gonna have to do something here. We're friends, but we're going. Uh, you're going to let me get away with this. And then Dale, not really knowing what to do, kind of allowed that to happen. 
would it have been wise to call the police if somebody armed with a gun or who threatened his life? And even with the few words that they spoke together, he could have been told um, that he was going to be killed. And even with that, you know, there's some fear there. He, he would just cooperate. Just if it's a friend, like okay, just let him take this platinum and leave, and he'll he won't die. But perhaps because he was recognized, that the the the, the thief, whether or not he knew Dale, felt the need to murder him. It's, these are questions, a lot of questions in my mind, uh, just a lot of unanswered questions. However, after, tw after this much uh, time has passed, after 27 years, I would, I would be led to believe that he wasn't involved in that, or that he's at least deceased today. Was the masked man an employee? He seemed to have information, such as where to find tools and bags that would be needed to complete the crime. Kind of screams of an inside job, or somebody with a bit, bit of knowledge, unless Dale was able to show him all that. And So there's so many questions that come from this. If Dale was armed, why didn't he use the gun? You'd think that's sort of what it's for. He was a, a legal gun owner. He, you would think, have, would have some experience with it. Hopefully, he would know that it's to be used in self-defense and be able to do so. But he didn't. The holster was found. The gun was never found. A question that I have: How can you even sell the platinum? Is that something easy to do? Dale would have only received half of the two hundred fifty thousand dollars in platinum. Potentially, only half of. Uh, half as the platinum would have to be sold on a gray or black market potentially for less than market value so if you have two hundred fifty thousand dollars and you can only sell it to a, a semi-legitimate buyer for some some buyer somewhere obviously they'd have to be i say semi-legitimate because they'd have to have a lot of money to buy it even if it wasn't a gray market so even if you could find such a buyer who was credible and you were able to sell it to for one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars, you would you would think because two hundred fifty thousand dollars would be the full market value. Why would they pay the full market value for platinum when it's an illegal sale? You'd think that they would want a deal. So if Dale Cursed had got half of that, that's sixty-two thousand five hundred. That's certainly no uh, financial or economic incentive to be away from family for this many years. And even the full two hundred fifty thousand dollars to me isn't really wouldn't wouldn't be an incentive. Definitely not for me, but I would say for most people as well. On the flip side of that, the value of the platinum may have been higher than the estimated 250000 and the platinum has increased also in value since that time, but it still begs the question how it was sold to begin with, and I just don't see that being something very easy to do. Platinum sales, I'm under the impression that they t tend to be fairly regulated in comparison. It's, it's not like other things that you, you deal with black and gray markets all the time. This is something that would be highly suspicious if it, it came up as a transaction. Del Kerstetter was declared legally dead on July 11, 2014. Some of Dale's statistics. His gender is male. Uh, his date of birth was March 7, 1937. He was 5'4", 130 pounds. He had blue eyes. He had brown and gray hair and a receding hairline. Robert Stack also said on Unsolved Mysteries that he had two false front teeth. That's a photo of Dale Kerstetter as he looked at the time around when this occurred. Dale seemed like a loving family man and father. His family did say a lot of nice things about him. It's not as if anybody had any hard feelings toward him. His daughter Penny seemed to indicate that he was just your sort of typical blue collar worker, hard worker, and somebody who worked to support his family and, and loved his family. Had five daughters and a son and uh, kind of funny that the son was being 16 years old it seemed to me that he would have been the youngest and um, I think anyway I'm not completely sure on that but if that's the case it's it's imagine you trying for a son and then getting five daughters and then finally a son happens. I admit I, I certainly did want a son and uh, if you know grant you know I'll say if, if I had had five daughters I probably would keep trying for one until I got one as well but uh, I'm not really sure if that was Dale's intention but either way he's a, a father and to me uh, I would have to say I you know I, I do profile and definitely as a, a person who is a father myself I, I, pro I give some points to family men and, and Dale uh, working as being a hard-working man and somebody who supported his family and had good words said about him by his children as well as his mother. These all factor in my book as somebody who I think seemed like a really nice guy. It seems pretty out of character that he would do something like this based on the character that was established by his family I, I, and also his track record as a worker, 27 years at the company. That's a pretty hardworking guy. My idea regarding him looking into the camera, I don't really know that that's flaunting a crime. It just seems like an awfully weird way to do it. I'd say, if anything, people, and even to this day, cameras, these surveillance cameras, don't really show an awful lot. I, I find a lot of them to be very poor, and it would seem like he was just trying to indicate something to the camera, like something's going on, help me out. Uh, I'm being, I just, this, this is all that I can say as a, just look straight in and what else can you do? Apparently, he knew that there was nobody on the other side anywhere watching the footage at the time, 
so, so the question is, why would he have signaled to the camera if he knew that nobody could see it at that time? If that's true that he knew that nobody could see it at that time, that is. But how do you convey that, that you're being taken away? What if hypothetically he was being coerced? How do you convey that? You know there's a camera there. How do you convey that? You can look with a stern look, maybe, and that's about all that you can do. You can't make any sudden actions because you, you, you could potentially get killed, so you can only look at the camera. So it makes sense that if he was being coerced that he would do that. Flaunting a crime, I don't know why he would flaunt a crime like that. The fact that he was on camera, wouldn't. why not just give the middle finger then? Right? Like if you're flaunting a crime. I think that's extremely consistent with the notion of somebody just trying to signal anything because he's being coerced. Because if he wasn't being coerced and he was flaunting a crime, he, there could have been many other ways for him to do that. I, I would suspect that after this much time has passed that Dale didn't do it. He would have... He didn't have a strong enough financial incentive, in my opinion, even if it was $500,000, that wouldn't have been worth it. He could have come back only seven years later after the statute of limitations was up. I just see no major incentive for him to, to do this. So in the end, I don't think he did commit this crime. And I feel very sorry for his family to, to have to have lost their dad and to have no closure on this case. These are my references. I used the Charlie Project case uh, file on Dale Kerstetter, the file on Dale Kerstetter from unsolved.com, and I'd say most importantly, a thread about Dale's Ker Dale Kerstetter on sitcomsonline.com, which is a great Unsolved Mysteries message board. Co covers a lot of theories. Reading through the thread, I think I became more confused and unable to form an opinion on it. I, at first, thought pretty clearly he wasn't involved, and, and let's just say I, I still strongly do believe that but had I been reading that thread, say, 20 years ago, or maybe even 23 years ago, maybe during the time the statute of limitations wasn't up, I definitely would have gone back and forth on it. I would have thought maybe he was to do with it. The only reason why I think that he's innocent now is because so much time has passed and he hasn't. he's nowhere to be seen. His body was found nowhere. You'd think that he would have just showed up somewhere. So I do believe he was innocent. But... If it was during the first seven years and I'd read that thread, I would have left highly confused and, and uncertain. But uh, as it is now, sadly, I do think that Dale was the, was the victim of foul play, was the victim of murder, and that his body hasn't been found anywhere. And that's really unfortunate for his family, who wasn't able to get closure on this. They seem like very good people and people who I would have been interested in meeting myself. And I particularly liked the information given by well, all of his family members, his children and his mother. Just had a, had a lot to say about him as a loving son and a loving father. Well, those are my thoughts on the case. I encourage you to read the sitcoms online thread about Dale Kerstetter because that will give you some notion of as to what the, the facts of the, of the case are. And any thoughts, please post them below. Once again, if you can assist me with this channel in any way or give any advice or feedback, I would love to hear about it. If there are any cases that you think I should cover, feel free to let me know. And once again, thank you for watching.